So what exactly is sliding friction? Well, whenever we have an object that is sliding along a surface, the two surfaces will create a force known as kinetic friction that will oppose the motion of our object. So, for example, let's suppose we have a box that is sliding in the positive direction along our x-axis. So the net force acting on the box that is creating the motion points in the positive direction and is parallel to our x-axis, to the ground. Now, the two surfaces, the surface of the box and the surface on which the box is laying on, will create a force known as kinetic friction that will oppose our net force. So it points in the opposite direction of our motion. So it points in the negative direction along our x-axis. Now, what exactly is kinetic friction? In other words, what creates kinetic friction? And in general, what creates friction? Well, if we zoom in onto the microscopic level and examine the area between the two surfaces, we will see that the electrons of the atoms of object one, our box, interact with the protons on the atoms of the second object, our actual surface. And these interactions between the negatively charged electrons and the positively charged protons create kinetic friction or simply friction. So once again, what is actually taking place and creating friction, causing friction, is the electrons and protons composing the solid surfaces of both objects interact via electrostatic forces, electrostatic interactions. So, what exactly is the formula for kinetic friction? Well, the formula is given by the following equation. The magnitude of our kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, which depends on the type of material, type of object being used, multiplied by the normal force. The normal force is simply uh, given by taking the mass of the object and multiplying by gravitational constant. Now, notice what this formula tells us. It tells us that kinetic friction is independent of the surface area of our object. In other words, it doesn't matter how large or small the surface area is, as long as the mass of the object is exactly the same and the coefficient is exactly the same, the magnitude of kinetic friction will be the same. It is independent of the surface area used. Now, let's talk about a second type of friction known as static friction. So there exists another type of friction known as static friction. It's the force created between two surfaces that are stationary relative to one another. So now let's suppose I take the same box and the box is no longer sliding. Let's suppose that it's stationary on the box. If I try to push the box with a force that's less than the maximum of our static frictional force, my object will not move because static friction is opposing my motion. So let's look at the following formula. The formula for static friction is given by the following equation. So the magnitude of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by normal force. In other words, the maximum force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction multi multiplied by the normal force. So, let's look at the following diagram, where our y-axis is the friction force and our x-axis is the applied force. So, this point represents the maximum force of static friction. Anything above the maximum force of static friction goes directly to kinetic friction, as we'll see in just a moment. So, let's suppose an object is resting on a surface. Now, if we apply a surface less than the maximum force of static friction, the object will not move. 
So in, if I'm in this area, if I'm applying a force, if my applied force is less or equal to the force of static friction, my object will not move because the surfaces create a force known as static friction that opposes my applied force. So my net force is zero. Now, as soon as the applied force exceeds the maximum static force, object, my object will begin to slide and kinetic friction will replace static friction. And that's exactly why if I apply a force that's greater than the maximum static friction force, my line jumps to the kinetic friction line. So after this force, I have to apply this formula. After this applied force, I have to apply my formula for kinetic friction. So, let's look at the following example. So, let's suppose that my normal force of the object is 100 newtons. Let's assume my coefficient of static friction is 0.7 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.3. Now, let's calculate the maximum static force and the maximum kinetic force. The maximum static force is 0.7 multiplied by 100, and that gives us 70. Now, the maximum, or actually the kinetic force, is, is equal to 0.3 multiplied by 100. Now, what this above value tells us is, if we apply a force that is equal to 70 newtons or less than 70 newtons, my object will not move. But if I apply a force greater than 70 newtons, my object will begin to move and kinetic friction will take over. So if I'm trying to find my net force acting on my object, I take the applied force and subtract the force of kinetic friction and that will be my net force on the object. So for example, if my applied force is 100 newtons, my net force will be 100 newtons minus 30 newtons and that gives me 70 newtons.